What's up bros and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I am Dave Koss and today I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks. This is tips and tricks number one and we're going to talk about three things. One of them is uh, bevels and how to change materials on bevels, how to change them on caps only, and we're also going to talk about um, a special little trick I like to do in my reflections. I thought I'd throw that in there. Now, some of you might already know about this, but when I was brand new to Cinema 4D, I had no idea how to do different colored bevels and different colored caps and uh, different colored sides to, to text. And it's fairly simple, but you would not know by looking at a material tag exactly how to do that. There's nothing that says make this on the bevel only. You have to type it in manually. So if we look at a blank scene and we go up to the MoGraph menu and make some Mo text, text, nice and plain. Now I'm going to change this to say, surprise, BroGraph. BroGraph. All right, and then in fonts, uh, pet peeve of mine, Maxon, if you're listening, I don't need to see what the fonts look like. I know what they look like. I just want a list, and I want to be able to type the first letter of a font and have it actually come up because I have a lot of fonts on some of my systems. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, a request for R16. Maybe you already did it in R15. I don't know. I'm not there yet. Gotham. Big surprise there. We're going to go with Gotham and on caps, I'm going to click the start and end. I'm going to hold down command. So we're doing start and end caps at the same time. And then I'm going to hold command again and change it to fillet caps. Fillet, not fillet. I thought it was fillet the first time I saw it. Now you can see what that did. That gave us bevels. Pretty bevels. I'm going to center this just because it's easier for me to navigate like this. All right, now, what if we want to do some colors? Let's do some red, white, and blue for America. I'm going to make a red texture. And uh, you know what? I'm going to set my specular low and pointy, which is my favorite place to start. And I'm um, going to turn on Reflections, and I'm going to do like 20%. We might not even use Reflections in this tutorial, but it's a good starting point. So I'm going to copy and paste. And on the second one, I'm going to make it green color. I'm sorry, why gr I didn't say green. I said red, white, and blue. What am I talking about? Okay, blue. Then I'm going to copy, paste, do another one, and I'm going to make it all white. So there we go, red, white, and blue. And we are going to put it on BroGraph. Now, I'm going to start with the white as a base. I'm going to put that onto the text. And if I hit Command R Render, there we go, white text. Next, I want to put on just the bevels, I want to put blue. So I'm going to drag that on here as well, but the whole thing's blue, so what do you do? Well, down here in selection, I really wish there was an extra little thing that said bevels or caps. Because the bevels are these edges here, and then the caps are the front pieces. And you have to type in to do a, uh, a bevel, you have to type R1. Now, see what that did? That put the blue right on this bevel. Now notice it's not on the back side. Now this is something at least I wish you could do. I wish you could go in and type comma R2 and then have blue on both bevels. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to do a separate tag. I'm going to delete that so you can see that, that we're back here. You have to do a separate tag for that. And the easiest way to do that is to hold down command and just drag that tag over 
and just change it to R2 and now you can see it's on the back side. That's pretty simple. Now that's for the back. Um, you'll most likely in most cases want to put it on both sides especially if your text is moving around but I'm going to delete that because I want to make this simple for you to see in the tutorial. Now we're going to do the caps and we want to make the caps red so I'm going to drag red on top and in selection I'm going to type C1 so now I've got all three colors now it's important that you do it in the right order because if you move white on top it's which is to the right it's going to be on on top of everything so there is a definite order to the way that you do this when you move them around it doesn't matter for for uh, for R1 and C1 because they wouldn't cover each other up but if you're just putting a general white that's what you need to do for if you want the white on the base you need to put it at the bottom of the totem pole so here is a cool trick you can do because sometimes let's say um, you're extruding a client's logo and you want the base to be a specific color um, maybe you do want the base to be white but let's say they have red text as we have here and then they have uh, blue on the inside but then there's kind of a black border well you don't have two options for two different uh, bevels so here's what you do click on your text and for this uh, particular tutorial just so we can see what we're doing I'm gonna kinda jack up the uh, radius actually let's go way up let's go to 10 jack up the radius of the the bevel here so we can see what we're doing so we've got these giant bevels going on right now now here's what we do if we want a second bevel uh, color not a second bevel but a second bevel color there's a fun trick to this and I actually just was trying to figure this out the other day and I did a little experiment and it worked so I'll share it okay this blue right here if we go back to the basic tab and we turn on alpha now we have an alpha channel that we can use and for this case I'm gonna say I want a gradient now it's just ignore what hap is happening in the viewport right now if you click on that gradient what we're gonna do is bring the black and white to the middle so that is not technically a gradient I mean there's a bunch of ways you can do this honestly there's um, you know different textures you can put in here to accomplish this you could use um, I mean, you could even build a perfect 50 50 black and white alpha in Photoshop and then and then bring it into this channel but this is just a real easy way to set this up real quick and then uh, we're gonna use 2d V for the direction you can see what happened here now is there's only half of that color in the bevel and you can see on the material down here now it looks like half of a sphere now I want to do another one I want to put a black border on it so I'm going to take this blue texture here and I'm going to copy and paste it so I have a duplicate and um, on the color I'm going to change it to black on the alpha I'm gonna go back here now I could just go in and change this black and white but because I want them to be exactly the opposite of the other one and I don't want to accidentally move these a little bit off and, and have them not right I'm just gonna invert this alpha right here now I'm gonna drag that on top of my mo text and I'm going to tell it that I want it to be R1 as well. And there we go. You've got a double color bevel, which is very handy to have because some people will give you an artwork file that looks like this, and you're going to have to recreate it. And rather than trying to do um, a like a second piece of text that's a little bit bigger, and then maybe you you animate. This happens to me. This used to happen to me all the time. You would animate the thing and then 
you would have like double letters and then they would start sliding around and it would get kind of messy. Sometimes you can fake it, but this is really the easiest way to do it. There you go, just like that. Now, that's kind of a crash course. Uh, you can do R1, R2, C1, and C2, and those are basically the only things you can put in there. Your base color that's on the sides is at the bottom, and there you have it. Now, the bonus of this, the bronus, is that a lot of times you want a cool reflection on your text. And yes, you can go in and you can do that in After Effects. Um, like if you want like a hard line reflection uh, or you want kind of an oval reflection, kind of um, Web 2.0-ish, I guess, kind of Apple app icon-ish. You could do that in After Effects, but I actually like to do the brute force method because once everything lands, it will all fall right into place. So I'm going to create a camera and let's say we just did a really nice looking animation and all these letters fell into place. Wherever our camera lands, we would mark our final keyframe. This is where the camera ends up at the end of an animation. And then you would go to whatever you wanted to reflect. In this case, I want the red texture to reflect a nice subtle oval. And I'm going to use this red texture. Now in the reflection tab, I'm going to jack up the reflection all the way. So it's a mirror. And if I hit render, you can see it's reflecting nothing because there's nothing to reflect right now. Now for this example, I'm going to quickly just create a sky. I have it set up here as a shortcut, but you can find it up in here. I'm going to go to the con content browser and I'm going to search for an HDRI image. And this happens all the time. This is the same thing that happens. You've got to clear your search, turn off your search, click on preset, search again, and type it again. You listening, Maxon? All right. This is my favorite, HDRI 004. This is my absolute favorite um, HDRI sky to use. I'm going to double click that. I'm going to go back to my objects. I'm going to drag that onto the sky. And here it is. Now you can see if I render, there's tons of reflection. One thing I really like to do with this particular um, material is I'll go to luminance and hold down uh, this little arrow and I want to do some effects and if you haven't done this before this is a great introduction to this if you want to layer effects on top of each other you click you click on layer and then when you click on the little square icon you will get this list of layers so not only is that bitmap there that was already there but now you can go on top of it I like to add an effect of brightness, contrast, and gamma, and a saturation, hue, and lightness effect. Now all I do with the HSL is I bring the saturation down because I want my reflections to be black and white most of the time. And then I'm just going to kind of mess with this brightness and contrast here. Until it's a little more contrasty. kind of looks like it has color in it, which is weird. Doesn't seem like it should. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Okay. So you can see I got black and white contrasty reflections going on here. Now they're not going to be that reflective. I'm going to um on my blue and my black bevel that I have. Uh, I'm going to turn up the reflections just a little bit more because I want to get I want to get cool looking reflections on my bevels. I'm totally overdoing it for this, but I'm just showing you what it does. Now, what I don't want to do is see a lot of that reflection in the red because we're going to do something else with it. And this will most likely block all of that, so we'll be fine anyway. I'm going to create my patented oval and what that is, is I create a disk 
and I orient it negative Z. Okay, I bring it out. And in front of Burrograph, I'm gonna scale this up a little bit. I'm gonna click on the disk in my um, object window here, and then I'm gonna go to Coordinates tab. I am going to take the X scale, stretch it out, and there's a nice slow, uh, slow changing oval. Now you can see if it's lined up, which I'll show you the right way to do this in a minute, um, it, this is going to create a cool oval reflection in the word Brograph. First thing you need for this is a texture. So you make a new texture and you give it a luminance channel because you want this thing to fully reflect in your Brograph text. Drag that full white onto this disk. Okay. Now, remember, this camera has already been set. And it's very important that you do this after you set your camera move because if you kind of set this up and then you do a camera move, it might not line up in the end. So line it up at the end. I'm going to go to my four views here. And I'm going to hit Alt-R, which is my friend. So I can kind of see auto an auto update on what's going on here. And in my front view, I'm going to grab this disk. You can see if I move it up and down, I can't see what I'm doing. Well, that is because the camera can see the disk, and we don't want that. Something also that's very important, if I uh, move this up a little bit, it's kind of hard to see. It's not too bad right now, but there is... You can kind of see here on the left side, it's a very low segment, uh, very low segments on this oval. We want it to be a really smooth disk. So if you click on your disk, go to Objects, change your rotation segments, just jack them up nice and smooth. All right. On your disk, you're going to add a tag so that the camera cannot see this thing blocking your view because you only want it in the reflections. You go to Tags, then you go to Compositing. That's the Compositing tag. In the Tag tab, you do not want this oval to cast shadows because if you're lighting this scene, it's going to cause shadows all over the place. The oval will not cast shadows. It will not receive shadows. It is not seen by the camera. And something else that you'll want to just remember to do by default is turn off scene by transparency because if you have any objects that you're fading in with like a display tag or something like that and that is in front or behind it, you will actually see you will see the oval coming through the transparency. It's really weird. So just turn that off. So now we can't see it. We can see its reflection because it's all white. I'm going to go back to this four-way view here. Now notice we can still see this in the viewport. We can see the disk in the viewport. So we're going to start moving it. There we go. And make sure that you're on your camera, <laughs> your final camera view. So you can see what's going on there. we got this cool line going. Now I'm getting more white on the H, and that's because of my sky. I don't like the position of my sky, so I'm going to just rotate it. Till I find a place where I'm not getting too many crazy white reflections. This is fine right here because we're going to back off this reflection a lot. So on your red material, which is down here, which we have at full 100% mirror reflection, we're going to take it back down. We're going to do 30. Now this number will change depending on what color value you're using. Notice if this is, I'm sorry, my color if this were black, you can really see that pronounced uh, oval reflection. If this were white, you can't see it as much. So the amount of brightness of your reflection changes based on color values. Keep that in mind. But the best way to do any sort of reflection alignment is just to keep it up all the way like a mirror. 
I'm going to make my color back to red for now. And then just back it off. I like to start at 30 and work my way up or down until I find something I like. Now also keep in mind that your scene needs to be lighted before you do this. I haven't put any lights in here because that's really a different tutorial. Uh, it will affect the reflections and how bright the reflections are and all of that. So you'll want to light the thing before you do this. So if I hit render, hello computer, hit render, you can see a nice subtle oval reflection. And now there's one more thing if you really want to step it up a notch that you can do. Remember that uh, bright white luminance that we put on the disk? We can actually make it a gradient. If you create a texture in that luminance tab for this case I am going to do a vertical on the texture tag for the disk go ahead and put flat so we can really see what we're doing here and you can see that it's tiled three times that that gradient. We go back to the gradient again here. See what I'm doing? You got black to white gradient here. I'm actually going to reverse this because I don't feel like rotating the oval. Now I want a really hard white on the bottom and I want it to fade to black as it goes up. So You can see there's that hard white it fades to black it's fading to black, except we have the three tiles here, which we don't want. You click on the texture tag next to the disk, and, oops, wrong one, you can change the length and offset so that you just have one nice gradient. Now, that gradient is going all the way up that oval. I don't want that per se. I kind of want... Um, I want a quicker gradient because you're not going to see the rest of this oval and the reflection. You're only going to see this little bit right here. I'm going to get it kind of lined up. So all that stuff on the top half of the oval won't even be seen in this reflection. So I'm going to bring up my brightness of my reflection in the red a little more so you can see now it's a little more pronounced I bring it up even more you can really see this okay now I'm hitting alt R again so I can get kind of some real-time feedback you're starting to see a little bit of a gradient here um, I'm gonna go to this front view here and I'm gonna turn on shading so I can not have to pull out my camera in perspective view I can see what I'm doing over here in the front view what I'd like to do is see that gradient that's pretty much all we can do with that now we can if we want it to be a faster gradient we can move this black here rather than changing the tiling of the texture so there's kind of two ways to do it if you think that you're gonna get the reflections of the rest of your disk I would say go ahead and make this a, a full gradient in fact, I'll do that and show you. We'll go back to the full gradient there. And then back in this tag, we'll change the gradient so it's a faster gradient. It all happens faster. It goes from white to black really fast. And see what's happening up here? That's a cooler looking reflection. And what's nice about that is if you're animating that text, when it lands right there, it's going to be perfect. It's going to have that perfect little line right there. And that's basically all there is to it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very brute force method. And um, sometimes that's the easiest way to go. See? So the last thing I like to do when I get that in place on my disk and it's where I like it, I actually just set a keyframe anywhere on its, 
on his timeline because if I accidentally move it and I screw it up, well, I can just move forward or backward in the timeline and it's right back where it's supposed to be. I do that with a lot of objects that are kind of set in place and aren't going to animate, but I don't want to accidentally move them. The other thing that I was going to do is show you, um, you probably know what these little traffic light dealies are here. If you don't, go look at my intro to Cinema 4D. You probably don't want to see this oval, especially if you're working with a large scene with a lot of designs and graphics and junk. You don't want to see this in here. You still want it to be reflected in your scene, but you don't want to see it uh, while you're trying to navigate around. So if you click twice on the top traffic light, it will disappear out of your viewport and kind of out of the way so you could still work. Yet, when you render, it's still going to be taken into consideration. And that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks number one. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, please go to brograph.com and subscribe to that. Uh, it's a monthly newsletter, and we talk about things we're doing behind the scenes, fun little experiments we're doing, uh, what we have in store. The other thing that we want you to do, uh, which is where we put all of our updates, is go to Facebook. Um, you know, you're on Facebook every day anyway, and you'll get a little notification whenever we... Uh, put something new on there and we put little extra stuff on there as well that you might not see on the website and uh, we've been having a lot of fun as well in the reddit cinema 4d subreddit so get in there too and uh, come talk to us come tell us uh, what you think about the tutorials and what you'd like to see us do um, even if you have a problem with something you're trying to figure out in cinema 4d uh, shoot us some sort of email or um, message on Reddit or uh, message on Facebook. You can pretty much find us. You can even find us on Twitter. So that about covers the bases. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, later bros.